Aloha, and welcome to this week's build. So this is part two on me recreating this historical Leo Mano design. Uh, if you watched part one, you'll see that I'm making a uh, weapon from an archive in the, I think this one's in the Bishop's Museum in Hawaii. Um, but the archive image, is, there's some differences between the archive image and uh, what I'm going to be making. The archive has uh, tiger, not instead of bull shark teeth, which is what I'm going to be using, it has great white shark teeth. Uh, another thing too is the great white shark teeth are massive, they're big teeth. And so what the original piece had is the teeth were slotted individually into the piece and then glued and pegged with bronze, which is actually super unique. Um, you Hawaii didn't really use bronze for anything. It, uh, it, the only time that it started having those types of materials was after trading with Western trade ships. Um, and so they can kind of infer the age of the piece just based off the materials that are in it. Uh, because I don't have great white shark teeth, I'm actually not going to peg the teeth. What I'm gonna do is kind of like a fake peg. So the teeth are going to be slotted individually, glued into place. Uh, but they're not going to be deep enough to put in a bronze peg. So the bronze peg is actually going to sit behind the teeth. Uh, so because of that, I'm probably not going to actually test this piece. So it's a little bit of a, <laughs> I guess, a spoiler alert. Uh, I'm, if the teeth were large enough and I could seat them in to where I could peg them into place, then I would. But since they're not, I'm um, just a glue. I'm not confident that the epoxy will hold strong enough for me to test with them sufficiently enough but other than that the rest of the piece is going to be largely based off of the design shape and feature set that you see uh, in that previous archive image um, as the where i left off i had done kind of the rough general shape and now i'm finishing up or rather i did the rough general layout uh, and now i'm roughing in the general shape uh, before I start any type of sanding and smoothing and, and, and clean up, I wanted to make sure and get all of the inside bevel. There is a, an inner bevel on the inside of the piece. I wanted the outside bevel to have a nice slope to it going down to the edge of where the bull shark teeth are going to be slotted into the piece. Uh, and then I'm going to be cutting the grooves. It's kind of a unique piece because the order of operations that I'm doing on this piece ended up being quite a bit different than what I normally do for a Leo Mono, um, just because of the design and the materials used in the original piece and how I'm needing to implement them in this one. And so the first steps here are pretty much the same as what you'd see me make on any other piece where I rough it out with my angle grinder, uh, files and, and chisels, and then I come back in with sanding discs and, and uh, finer sands uh, that I wrap around the files and I clean everything up and get all the lines nice and crisp and get everything ready for me to cut in the groove. Um, so that part of it stays the exact same. I'm just trying to keep good symmetry between both sides so that way it doesn't look out of place when you're holding it. The handle hold is a little bit larger than I think I would have originally liked but um, I, I kind of have a wide hand and so I, I didn't want something too small that would be awkward for me to hold. And so in, in Versi, I accidentally made it slightly too large. <laughs> but I think the proportions of the piece are gonna work out anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, if I had made it significantly too large, that'd be kind of a, a bummer because um, there's not a whole lot of uh, going back at this point in time. <laughs> Uh, but now that I have it pr sanded down to, I think at this point I had it sanded down to 220 grit. I was waiting to do 320 until I did a few more steps. But before I bring down the edge too thin, I'm going to go ahead and cut in the grooves for each tooth. And so what I'm doing is I was using a needle and marking the outer edge of the tooth using a tungsten carbide bit with my Dremel to cut the slot and then working my way back and forth holding the tooth in place and making sure everything fits. So the slots aren't perfectly attuned. There's enough room for me to get some glue in there. And I kind of did it on purpose. I wanted them to be nice and tight, but not too tight so that the glue would kind of help lock it into place. Uh, but it did take quite a while to cut in all of those grooves for every single one of those teeth. What's interesting though is usually at this point, I glue in the teeth, I'm actually going to be holding off on the teeth 
until I finish putting in the diamond pearl inlays. So the original piece that was on the archive image had, uh, as far as I could tell, four, possibly eight diamond mother of pearl inlays. And so I'm going to be doing eight, four on each side. And to, to make these, I first made the first diamond inlay as a template, and then I just transferred that template onto a bunch of blanks. And then using my grinding wheel, I'm going to be shaping those uh, pearl inlay is down and I do have my air filter and everything going but with the dust that kicks up from all of these mother of pearl sheets as well as the grinding wheel there's quite a bit in the air and so I went ahead and put on my respirator and then after that was done I opened up my garage door and kind of tried to clean it out and, and filter out as much of that as I could uh, the next step here is going to be cutting in these inlays it's a little bit of a challenge cutting in the inlay because the surface here is not perfectly flat um, that I'm working with. It's got some contours to it. And so it's a little bit of a challenge cutting that in because when I go to put it in, if it's not perfectly flat, the piece wants to kind of move around on you. And so what I decided to do is I would cut each one and glue them independently. That way I wouldn't A, forget which slot was cut for which piece um, because they are, even though I shaped them using the same template they're all slightly different from one another not perfectly the same they're just close and since i'm cutting out the inlays to be pretty much precise to each piece i wanted to make sure i wouldn't lose them and then the second reason i was gluing them in as i was going along was just so that i'd prevent it from damaging any of the walls where i'm cutting in these inlay because it is a little bit of fragile of an area as you do that and I'm gonna be hitting it with the hammer and flipping it around and doing stuff on it. So I just wanted to protect it and make sure the inlay would be nice and clean um, and I'd be able to take care of it. So I went ahead and skipped a big chunk of that. This actually took me, I think two and a half days just cause a lot of back and forth trying to make it as clean as I can. Uh, I, I just didn't want to put that whole process in here. <laughs> because it's the same process for every single diamond. Uh, and so I'm just going to show the first couple ones on here. I got that finished, flipped it over, cut in these next four ones, got this finished and glued in. Uh, the next step here is going to be smoothing out the pearl. Uh, I can use my disc sander, but pearl's quite a bit harder than the surrounding coal wood. And so if you take it straight to the wood, you're going to end up getting waves on the wood where it it worked down the wood faster than it did the pearl. And so the first thing that I do is use that metal file to make the pearl flush with the surrounding coal wood and then take the disking sander, uh, the sand disc. And then the last step here is I'm just filling in the little tiny gaps um, from the imperfect uh, inlay with super glue and sawdust and then doing a final sanding over top of that. And then before I put in the teeth, I'm actually doing some final shaping just to make sure everything is nice and clean. Uh, the primary reason for that is once the teeth are in place, it becomes a lot harder to maneuver because you've got these sharp teeth pointing everywhere. <laughs> and so I've got pretty much all of it finished up until this point. I still have quite a bit of work to do here, but at least I'm at a point now where I can put the teeth in and I'm not too concerned that they're gonna get in the way with some of the next steps of the process. And so each tooth is slotted individually. Uh, I did that primarily because that's how this piece was described as being done. And so I, I was trying to follow that archive image as close as I can for the most part. The next step here is putting in the brass pegs. So I just, I drew first with the pencil the outline so I have those nice and clean and then using a nail to give me a starter hole. And the round bar that I found is eighth inch round bar. So it's kind of a thicker peg, uh, but again, the pegs aren't actually going through the teeth. So they're kind of a full peg, uh, more A artistic and B to just match the image. Uh, before I put the pegs into place though, I'm cleaning up some of this excess epoxy now that it's had a time to set and dry. Um, I just wanted to make sure that's all cleaned off. 
and I needed 20 of these. I ended up getting two sticks of round bar just in case I messed up, but the one ended up being just fine. So I cut them relatively the same height. The funny thing is, is when I got to this point, I realized I wasn't sure what I was gonna do to file them down. <laughs> So I took a hand file and I started it hand filing it. I was like, oh, this is gonna take years. So I was going through my uh, bits for my Dremel and I found that cutting disc and that worked perfect for getting them a lot shorter. And then I pulled out this grinding wheel here, which was a nice little tool to get them close to flush. Once they were close to flush, I could then use my disc sander to fully flatten them out and get everything nice and flush and square. I'm not too worried about, uh, I, you saw me earlier, I did put a little bit of super glue on the pins. I'm not too worried about it though because I'm going to be oiling the piece and the oil is gonna expand those grains which are gonna lock those pins into place even more. Uh, and so I wasn't too worried about them sliding out or falling out. Uh, they'll, they'll get locked into place uh, just the way that they are. But man, this is absolutely gorgeous, the way that this piece oiled up. The funny thing is usually after oiling, I still have quite a bit of work. With this piece, because I had to get all of it prepared before I could oil it, it's almost done. <laughs> so it ended up kind of being funny because oiling it up gave me a preview of the finished piece just because uh, the only thing left to do here is put on a couple more coats um, and a sealer, and then it's, it's finished. And so... Here is the finished oiled piece. And then as soon as I get this done, I'll let this sit for a day, put on a couple more coats. And now I have the final finished piece. And man, did this thing turn out absolutely gorgeous. The All the different colors, so there's a dark grain curly koa, uh, which it's almost like an amber color. The diamond inlays look absolutely beautiful. And then the bronze or not bronze the brass pegs just have a nice contrast to that so here is my finished piece leave me in the co uh, uh, comment in the comments below if how you think i did Do you like my piece um, obviously there's some differences between mine and the original archive piece uh, but let me know what you think if you think i did a good job if you think it sucks <laughs> if i could have done better uh, but this was a ton of fun a ton of work oh my gosh i think this piece it took me just as long as some of my largest pieces I've ever made, but I'm totally pleased with it. Uh, it turned out absolutely gorgeous. Again, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be testing with it just because I'm not confident in the, the teeth, uh, but a beautiful, gorgeous piece. Um, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Leave me a comment uh, and a like and subscribe if you haven't. It helps out a ton. Mahalo Nui for everyone that follows along. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Aloha.